Hi, I'm Kurt Suizo, Glaucoma Specialist at Tower Clock Eye Center. I want to talk to you today a little bit about something called laser peripheral iridotomy, or PI. Um, this is something that we'll use uh, in some instances in order to correct an anatomic issue with your eye that might predispose you to something called angle closure glaucoma. Um, so it's not uncommon for us to do this treatment. It's usually used as a preventative treatment in order to keep the patient out of trouble, uh, but it is sometimes used as a rescue treatment once patients have already developed angle closure glaucoma. Uh, so this is for a, a specific setting. It's for a specific type of glaucoma. It doesn't apply to most glaucoma patients in this country, um, but when it's needed, it's, it's important to do and it has a lot of benefit, very little if any downside. Um, so I'll talk a little bit first about why we might do this treatment. Um, when we have a patient come into the clinic uh, we're, for a general eye exam, we're looking at a few things in order to make sure the eye is healthy. And one of the things that we're assessing is whether or not the drain in the front of the eye, this is the part of the eye that drains fluid from inside the eye in order to keep the eye pressure nice and low, whether or not that drain has enough room to work. And that drain is located, I'll try to show you in this model, right in front of the iris, the colored part of the eye, and right behind the cornea, that's the clear watch glass part of the eye. And it's tucked into something called the angle. Now this is a little tough to visualize because it's kind of 3D anatomy. But that drain is a circular structure located, tucked into that area, and it's located right between where the clear part of the eye intersects with the white part of the eye, all right? So that structure, if you look at this model of an average eye, most of the parts of the eye that focus light are kind of crowded near the front of the eye, and that's right where that drain is. It's sandwiched in between these different parts. The majority of the eye is this larger cavity back here. So even though these structures are a little bit crowded, they still have enough room to work, all right? But when we have farsighted patients, now these are patients who need glasses not only for their near vision, but also for their distance vision. It's kind of a misnomer, it's a little confusing, but farsighted patients need glasses for just about everything. Farsighted eyes are shorter than most eyes, so the length of the eye front to back is shorter, all right? It's just the way they are. Their eyes are healthy, but because the eye is shorter, those patients need glasses in order to focus light on the retina and see an image. But because those eyes are shorter than most eyes, these structures start out life even more crowded than you normally would be. Now, even in that setting, there's usually enough room for everything to work properly. But as these patients age, just like everyone else, they're gonna start developing a cataract, all right? Which means that the lens in the eye, right here, right behind the iris, is gonna start getting thicker and thicker. And it does that, it grows before it starts getting clouded and interfering with your vision. So as that lens grows, it'll push the iris forward, it'll crowd that structure even more, all right? So at some point, when we look at you, we'll say, eh, I don't know, that drain doesn't quite have enough room to work properly. I'm worried that that iris is gonna push forward enough to actually close the drain off and drive the pressure up, causing a big problem. Now, if that were to happen, oftentimes what we'll see is a very sudden increase in pressure, all right? It's no fun, uh, it's a big problem. You get a massive headache, you get sick to your stomach, the eye gets red, your vision gets blurry. A lot of patients go to the emergency room. Uh, they're treated for abdominal problems like GI distress because they're just throwing up everywhere uh, before everyone figures out what the problem is and treats the eye. Um, so if we can get ahead of this and we can do a preemptive treatment in the clinic, we've saved you a lot of trouble. Um, eyes that develop angle closure glaucoma, who actually go on to, to close off that drain, are really never quite the same. So this is something where if we see a patient who's at risk for this type of glaucoma, we always like to just do this treatment, get that issue off the table and keep them safe, all right? Um, so we'll recommend what's called laser peripheral iridotomy. And what we're doing in this case is we're using a laser. This isn't a vision correction laser. This is a different type of laser to just make a tiny hole in the iris, in the colored part of the eye, all right? Now you already have a hole in the iris. It's called the pupil. But this is gonna be a hole separate from that one. It's very, very tiny. Um, you won't be able to see it. Your doctor won't even be able to see it unless they're specifically looking for it. But we're gonna make that tiny little hole with a laser, and it's a little bit like popping a hole in a sail. It allows that iris to deflate a little bit, allows it to fall away from the drain, and to keep that drain open, all right? So it's curative. It fixes this anatomic problem in just about every patient that we use it on, most patients. 
Um, so it, it takes you from being at risk for this big problem and basically just gets that off the table. All right? um, risks are minimal. Uh, the treatment itself is actually pretty straightforward. It's not much worse than an eye exam. It takes just a, a few seconds to do. It's generally painless. Uh, your vision might be blurry afterwards for about, about an hour or so. We generally will have you use some eye drops for a few days uh, just to keep the eye comfortable. Uh, but there aren't any activity restrictions afterwards. You can even drive yourself home from the laser treatment. Um, and once it's done, you're pretty well set. That laser treatment never needs to be repeated, all right? Um, so at any rate, that's nothing to be concerned about. Um, if you do, if you have had laser peripheral iridotomy recommended to you, uh, it's a good idea to follow through on that because that means your doctor thinks that you're at risk for what could turn into be a really big problem that could be fixed by a really small procedure.